welcome back from your Tony Awards. It's all Friday. over, Beth. It's over. It's over. We're live at five. I'm Believe Paul Wintour. I'm Beth Stevens. And we don't know what to do now because the Tonys are over. Yeah, we're and just so bored, right? It's all. <laughs> meanwhile. Happy sleep deprivation day, everyone. <laughs> we have Julie James here. For Sirius XM, people. Broadway names. Uh, James. We saw her out in the town last night, as you do. Tom's she made a Tom's. glamorously late entrance. Like you and I were about to pack it in, and then she just showed up. Like I don't know. It's all, full beat it's all and a blur. It was good. It was all there. Uh, <laughs> I assume if you're watching this, you know who won the Tonys, but we could tell you. Oh, anyway. yeah. So, uh, Jeremy Hansen did well. Jeremy six, Hansen got six. Six Tonys. Including that, you know, best musical one. That, that, that that's, tchotchke. That's the big one. That's the tchotchke. Uh, what else? Hello, Dolly. Hello, Dolly won four. Four, yep. We Including have Bette Midler, who did, of did course, an epic speech. And Gavin Creel and is Gavin a Tony Creel. winner. Yeah. How happy are you? I'm happy. Yeah, we um, love Gavin Creel. Also I loved his outfit, too. I love the Jeff Moshi. Oh, so good. A lot of costume designers dressed the, the nominees this year, which I is know, fantastic. I love that. I love it. Yeah. Um, also won Best Play and Michael Aronoff. I thought you said Audra. Audra won Best Play. Audra wins everything she, every it's year. It's the one category she hasn't won yet. She'll get there. She'll get there. Oslo. 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 And Michael Aronoff, kind of a surprise, Michael. right? Yeah, like, I mean, but we talked well about. Deserved. Yeah, I mean, you know, those featured categories are hard to call. There are at always home. some surprises at the Tonys. That's what makes it fun. Yeah, um, but no big surprises. No. Maybe directors. Directors. Directors were Both kind of, of the interesting. Directors were not really on the predictions list. Right. It was Christopher Ashley for *Come From yes. Away*. Yes. Congratulations. And Rebecca Tageman from *Indecent*. Yeah. So Very yeah, exciting. great. Just oh, so many good people. So yeah. many good things. And how was the red carpet? Beth did the red carpet. It was wet. She was exhausted at the end of it. I was not. Ex I was refreshed because I was drenched. It was. It was like ninety. You degrees. were refreshed. Refreshed. I'm trying to make. Positive. That's not the feeling I was no, getting from you. I was wet. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was. A it was a sticky. Just ready carpet. for a new day. Just ready to take a shower. Um, it's it's hard because you're you're packed in with a lot of people. The lights are on. Yeah. And it's ninety degrees out. And you're dressed in, you know, black and white. I'm sorry. Sunny. I'm sorry. I didn't have to do that. And not only was it ninety degrees out, but what I heard, y'all were in a tent. Yep. So it was like a little oven. Behind and a little fence it, for some That reason. just added to nope. the heat. Yeah. This is the glamorous side of doing what we do, people. Super glam. Plus um, and heels. Thank you very much. I didn't have to do that. I, I, no, you're lucky. You're the I was boss. backstage. It's called backstage, but it's, it's like different three building. blocks away. <laughs> and uh, that's where the winners go. Some and of them. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for that editorial. <laughs> uh, <laughs> not all the winners come, but we had fun with the ones that came. So that was and great. They missed out on talking to you, Paul. And I'm sure they miss us. So much. Uh, we have some other news. Oslo, not Audra, is extending through July 16th. So you have another chance, more of a chance to see. Well, can we talk about one of the news things that came up last night? First oh, yeah, of all, Andy sure. Lefkowitz, did an our news editor, did an amazing job last yeah, night in the, in the room uh, getting scoops. And I, I was so excited because I heard it on the air. And I was like, wait, wait, wait. Did they just say false letters in the movie theaters? But th they, uh, that's awesome. That's right. So it was taped originally for Lincoln Center, I guess. but. It's, it's, a, going it's a thing now, you guys. I'm so excited. I'm going to see that a lot of times, Beth. Okay, bring a lot of tissue because you'll need it. Um, also, Jimmy might remount. Right. So that's exciting because yeah. it was a limited engagement at MCC, so little foxes could come in. When Ruben Santiago Hudson, the director, he's a big, you know, August Wilson, well, so originally actor in his plays, right. right? And now he's really been carrying on directing a lot of the plays and bringing them to new audiences. And I'm sure he wants to keep Jimmy going. I'm sure everybody does. This yeah. Is awesome. We keep are, that we, cab we chugging. A, we should keep a tally of how many times we praise August Wilson on Live at Five. It's a lot. Um, More or less than falsettos. Hmm. Anyway. Hmm. Okay. Um, so, M. Butterfly. We knew it was coming <gasps> with Clyde. Is there news Owen. about M. Butterfly? I love that play. I know you do. Directed by Julie Tamar. Tony winner Julie Tamar. Did they announce cast yet? Only Clive Owen, which we already okay. knew. Right, but right. it has a start date. It's going to be at a Schubert Theater to be announced. Okay. Whatever that means. October 7th is the preview date, and it opens on October 26th. Sorry. Okay, Beth, that's not, right, there's I'm nothing sorry, very I'm exciting about what you just said. Tony ratings. You just, you just Tony read off a bunch of dates. Tony ratings up or down. Which one? Don't look. Tony ratings up or down. They're down. They're way down. Because, I, I mean, I have to say that I was watching it, because, you know, like for the first we're hour. We're watching it in an odd way, because we're in and out. Well, yeah, but we're watching him standing up, holding a microphone. I was doing that for an hour, watching the Tonys. And um, I was thinking... I'm afraid people are turning this off. 
I had that moment at one point just because I felt like it's it's tricky, and we're going to talk about the Tonys, but this entire episode Julie is going to change, too. About this. We have a lot to say about the Tonys. But, she might um, share it with you. But I'm not surprised, because a lot of times it's based on the shows, and of course down from Hamilton. I mean, that was like a huge yeah, year. that's true. Um, and, you know, we all expected it was going to go down. But it's tricky when you have to incorporate all the actual nominated shows, and not and all the nominated shows have the best numbers to do, and, and I don't know. Willow Dolly it is an unknown number, really. To yeah, and a lot of, and a lot. I mean, if you're going to make a Michael Riedel joke twice, in the opening That's number, very inside baseball. then you're inside. Yeah. I mean, yeah. twice. No, Kevin Spacey made two Michael Riedel jokes. That he repeated, and I love yeah. you, Michael Riedel. You and know that. And Groundhog Day, so we had to repeat everything. But yeah. But yeah, Michael Riedel twice. I will twice. say, I love that Rockettes number. That was like, come to New York. I haven't people. seen it yet. I was interviewing somebody during that. You were so busy. Can't wait. Being fabulous. Um, so that's all. That's all I have to say. Is that all the news? I mean, it's it's about the Tonys. That's what happened. Okay. Um, between Friday. What about and the now? poll results? Did those come out yet? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I haven't not? looked at them. I don't know what they are. What? I've been busy. <laughs> um, do we have any other things to say? But you'll talk about it with Julie. We'll talk about it with Julie. <laughs> okay. It's been a long day. <laughs> don't, you can just go look. It's at gonna the be a long list. night too. Um, okay, Beth. Thank you so much. We uh, we're gonna leave you. We're, we're gonna take a little break, and Julie James from SiriusXM will be back in a moment. But we're gonna leave you with a little look at something Beth did last night on the red carpet with oh, uh, all the see fancy Tony people. I am. Enjoy that. We'll be right back. <laughs> It's 90 degrees in New York City on Tony night, so I asked the stars how they stay cool on the red carpet, and that's the Tony pop pole. <laughs> I don't know, but like when you find out, can you please let me know? I think the breeze is like a little further that way. Gavin Creel has this little fan, and if you stand next to him and you're nice to him, he'll blow it on you. I'm from South Carolina, so I'm like a, I, I, this is right where I live, baby. I love it. I like the heat. There is no secret. I'm sweaty as all get out underneath this dress. I had a banana earlier. You think of an ice cold vodka drink ahead. It's just to relax and enjoy seeing people you like. Staying literally cool to keys my mommy, giving me pats for all my Jewish slut, who's here with me tonight, Julie. And staying uh, emotionally cool is just remembering that this is a once in a lifetime evening and that it's going to pass by no matter what, so I might as well smile and take it in. Not wearing Spanx, unlike me right now, who is sweating profusely from the waist down. Staying hydrated is what I'm learning. I mean, I'm hoping. Having half a dress on top is good. We don't. First of all, we're not like emotionally cool because we have no chill and literally swimming pools in the and back of our just tuxedos. Just the sweat is just right under yeah. here. We're like a Lynn Nottage play just on the red carpet yeah. right now. Just sweat. I'm not wearing any underwear. <laughs> I'm actually like a fried penguin in the suit. There's an ice pack involved. I see some fans. Oh my God, staying cool on the red carpet today, there is no key. I'm sitting here, think cool, think cool, think cool. Well, since I can't have my own personal air conditioner, I would say, uh, you know, just remembering that it's your turn, and last year was somebody else's turn, and somebody, next year will be somebody else's turn. And so just be grateful you have your moment, and then pass the baton. Delectable show of the summer with original music by Sarah Bareilles, the composer behind the hits Love Song and Brave. Hey guys, we are back on Live at Five with Look, Julie James. Look how bright and sparkly she <laughs> looks. We were just saying, Julie, how do you like pull it together, <laughs> turn it on? And you let in a little secret on the reveal. Sure. You said that some of this makeup might be repurposed Tony makeup. <laughs> so you don't do a fresh, total fresh it wipe. Was not <laughs> exactly. It was not a um, complete excavation okay. project. <laughs> um, we did a little HGTV re cool. repurposing, yeah. <laughs> repurposing DIY project. <laughs> 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 so, okay, last night was your Super Bowl, of course, all of us. How are you? How was your night? Let's fill me in. It I saw you out in the town, but. Big night. Um, really hot and not in the good way. Because you did the red carpet. <laughs> red carpet uh, as just well. like Beth did. You were, yep. Totally relate to everything Beth said about you're your in your full regale. <laughs> and you are trying to not literally melt while you talk to all of the people that uh, inspire you the most in the theater. Yeah. And uh, and just seem like it's it's such a strange experience, you guys, because 
you're literally looking in someone's face, yeah. holding a microphone, trying to get great bits to share with all of you. Yeah. And you're just feeling, you know, the beads. The bead you're of sweat. feeling the moisture just happening. Mm. And in, s in some cases, you're also seeing the moisture on the on the yes, person. Yes, and you're feeling kind of bad. And you're like, feeling mm, kind of you, bad got, you got you're one both too. <laughs> yeah, you're both just like, I'm melting. <laughs> so, um, but making it all look wonderful, and um, <laughs> it is the it is such an exciting time. Yeah. Um, and so, but but it's intense and. It, we, I think all of us that do this work really hard to make it look glamorous mm -hmm. and make it seem glamorous, mm -hmm. and, it, and it really is. It is the highest levels yeah. of excellence in, in every way, but it is also, mm -hmm. it's really hard work, you guys, so. The po uh, what you actually brought up a good point without knowing you did. When you were just saying that you're trying to get uh, a great like sound bite from people, yeah. and this is really interesting because this is something I don't think a lot of people understand, especially you. You're, you're working for radio. Right. So you are working for radio sound bites. Beth and I also, when we're doing interviews, we're really trying to get, it's very easy to just put a microphone in front of somebody you love and just tell them, how you doing? Hey. What's up? Yeah. And just sort of like have a friend conversation, talk. Right. friend talk, and you're not going to get anything necessarily usable right. for what we need sound bites for. So exactly. it's interesting to, we, we, you know, we all start as fans, right. but at the end of the day, you really do have to sort of take on this other, thing, you know yeah, what I mean? It's yeah, interesting. you need to get some, and, and I think that really is the tricky thing about um, being on the carpet, because you're trying to get something substantive yeah. that will be worth listening to, Yeah. but at the same time, it's quick, they're getting pulled in a million different directions, especially towards the end of the carpet. Yeah. Um, they are rushing in because they're about to take their seats. They're so distracted. They're, yeah, and, and the people are, and they're getting yelled at getting by multiple people. They're yeah. being pulled in all these directions, and they still have people that they clearly want to talk to, but they are, you know, um, I was talking with Pasek and Paul, who I literally had to like wave down yeah. and hijack because they were getting ready to go in. And in the middle of our conversation, um, Asher, Justin's wife, was like, they're literally about to lock the doors, like if we don't go in right now. And that's the pre-show where they give the creative the awards, creative awards yeah. like book and um, choreo and yeah, things yeah. like that. So they needed to be in there because they were, of course, up for a lot of those awards. Right. So. Right. Yo! <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think of the show? So wait, let's tell, explain everyone. You do the red carpet. Red carpet. And then you go back to Sirius XM HQ, which HQ. is not far from here. Yes. We're, we're like almost building. Neighbors. Yeah, we're neighbors in the, in the hood. Yep. Um, and you do what? You, you, well, well, you go to the rehearsal. Yeah, explain your day. Yeah. Um, so I get up early and go to the final dress rehearsal because that allows me to take copious notes where I plan what our broadcast is going to be live so on the air. So can you give air. me an example of that, of something where you saw it in the rehearsal and then it sort of helped you define yeah. what you wanted to do? Well, for instance, at the end, I mean, I basically make my own run of show. Mm -hmm. And then when I see all of the musical numbers that are going to be done, yep. and more importantly, what order they're going to be done in, I make a big list for our in-studio producer so that they know they're ready to pull those songs. Because I really envision the live broadcast that we do on Sirius XM on Broadway as a play-by-play. -play. So just like people that watch sports <laughs> might be in their cars. You can say it out loud, it's fine. You don't have to whisper it. <laughs> well, I needed them to get the wink-wink of that because that's <laughs> not me and play probably by play. not you. Yeah, it's a thing. Um, so if, if you're you know, a big sports fan and you're in your car and the big game is on and you tune <laughs> into the radio to get that play-by-play -play so that you can hear the, hear the game and hear the commentators you know, breaking it down for you, that's kind of how I envision what we do. Mm -hmm. Because I'm under no illusion as to if you're a Broadway fan within reach of any screen of any kind, you're watching. But we did hear from a lot of people who are out there driving or stuck in traffic or road tripping. One time Tina Fey said she was listening. Um, <laughs> and that we were keeping her up on what was going on in a Tony's past. So, um, and I usually try to haul in a special guest who is Tony related. I know, Did you, who'd you get this year? Somebody, this I think year. you got somebody I love. Mm -hmm. Who'd you get? La Chance. Ah, la 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 Chance. And she was incredible. She yeah. was so natural. She got to really um, shed light with our listeners about um, like the real the, the real perspective the of what it's right, like. Exactly. She won a Tony a Award, Tony of course, winner. for Color Purple. One thing that was cool that she brought up was that when Cynthia Nixon won, 
Um, so we're watching the telecast in the, you know, in the studio as we're doing the play-by-play. -play. And um, she mentioned that she won her Tony the same year that Cynthia Nixon won her first ah, Tony. Ah, for Rabbit Hole. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. So just little, you yeah, know, yeah. things like that. Great perspective. So after the red carpet, I rush, rush, rush back over to the studio, produce this epic broadcast play-by-play. And then um, I need to program all of the music that's going to play today because I don't want to do that without having the results so right. that Seth Rudetsky and Christine Petty can be talking about all the right. best moments of the Tonys. So program, 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 and then finally burst forth. That's why I was a little late. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't that glamorous. It was because I was working <laughs> and finally emerged into um, emerging from my burrow. No. Um, <laughs> Is that a song? It's from Groundhog Day. Oh my God, I'm sorry. Huh? Huh? <laughs> um, Julie James knows every lyric on Broadway. Well, when you, <laughs> when the music is going on 24 <laughs> hours for you, um, let's talk about that. Some numbers. What, what I'm fascinated by at the Tonys is that no matter what the show is, yeah. no matter how good it is. How it comes across on camera, on television, is a very different thing. And I think we really experienced that in a couple of ways last night. And I think that some shows don't have a great number. That's always interesting, but too. Shouldn't they? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's interesting. If it's, it's they're Tony nominated as the best musical, shouldn't there be a number in there What somewhere? was your favorite moment of the Tonys? Hmm. Well, I'm glad you asked, Paul. Um, I actually, uh, let's, let's celebrate that this is a little uh, tradition. Yeah. I was here doing Live at Five with you for the first yes, time. Yes, yes. One year ago. Yes, you were. The day after the Tonys. And what did I ask you? And you asked me what of the, now that we're done with the Tonys, what of next season are you most excited for? And I wouldn't even let you finish because I was like, Dear Evan Hansen. And then you were like, what, why? And I was like, Ben Platt. So give him the Tony now. So, um, so you made it sound like I reacted in a shady way, which <laughs> is not true. <laughs> but you definitely were very dear Evan Hansen with the shimmy, yeah, with the pom pom. I can't remember actually what your follow up was. I just remember that I was so adamant that I cut you off and wouldn't even <laughs> let you finish because I was like, I have to get it out. And uh, so seeing that come around, and you know, Ben's yeah. speech had a great little sound bite in it. Um, about what uh, what makes you strange is also yeah. what makes you powerful. Mm -hmm. um, that kind of reminded me of um, we had uh, Ben Pasek soundbite from the Oscar speech. Mm. This is for all the right, right. all the kids who dance, sing in the rain, and all the moms who yeah. let them, or you know, yeah, something yeah, yeah. like that. Yeah. So um, so anyway, that prop just pr on a personal level, yeah. I was so pleased for for them. Beth and I were saying that we love um, Pasek and Paul because they're always so excited. Yeah. Because, you know, it's interesting. Sometimes it, it's hard to, not everyone gets like super excited when they, e even in a moment like Tony Awards, like you, but you want like, you want emotions. You want like yeah. people to give you an, God they bless the them. They're always excited. They're the quintessential theater kids. They're the quintessential If they're ever jaded kids. and like, hey, what's up? I'm going to be so disappointed. Imagine, imagine. <laughs> Keep the magic. They're just there. Ben's just, just there. Like, It'd be the yeah. worst. Ben's Pasek, like jaded Ben's Pasek, yeah. would be the worst thing ever. Because <laughs> <laughs> he is delightful. Well, my friend Dave Quinn, who you yeah. know from People, uh, was in People, the People, People Magazine. People who read People. <laughs> <laughs> um, and not reading People, if you know what I mean. I, I know what you mean. <laughs> um, slap happy. See, this is what happens. No sleep. No sleep. Um, uh, he was in the media room last night, yeah. and he said that uh, he asked the Pasek and Paul about what's more exciting, the Oscar or the Tony. Oh. And they were like... Oh, the Tony! <laughs> so you got to love that they're like those kind of theater kids, that they... Well, they know, probably didn't really grow up dreaming of having an Oscar, but they grew up dreaming of... Dreaming of dreaming having a Tony. I'm dreaming <laughs> of my first <laughs> Oscar. Uh, David said you're on fire. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> people are upset about David Hyde Pierce's song uh, oh from Dolly. Um, people are reading. People love that. Chuck <laughs> said. Um, <laughs> who are you most? Uh, Bradley wants to know who you're most excited to see awarded. Let's take Pasek and Paul out of yeah, the equation. Yeah, yeah. Let's take. Uh, that's fine. You know, I'm, that's who, fair. Who, which are the actors? Were you really? Well. 
<laughs> no, because I know you're going to say Ben Platt. I, I, I mean, you know. Oh, but, 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 but we, I we thought ben you were going Let's take play. Ben Platt out of the equation. <laughs> Which of the dramatic play actors yeah, were you I most was like, excited? I thought that's what you were going for. I'm like, Laurie Metcalf? I was excited for Laurie Metcalf. I was excited. That's a great. That's a great. Pr and her she speech was really. Three times? Yeah. Yeah, three, and four, so four. Four times yeah, yeah, Beth, and one yeah, Beth, this one. Beth is smarter yeah, than fact us. Fact-checking Beth. Uh, <laughs> over in the corner. She, uh, and I liked her speech a lot. It was really Me sweet too. about being away from her kids. And yeah. I thought that was really sweet. Uh, Cynthia Nixon's always lovely. Yeah. Um, I have to say, I really did love that the Tonys chose to dedicate some really solid time to the plays. Well, yeah, what would you think of those monologues? I, 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 I loved liked them. them. I they had the, they them. had the playwrights come out. I liked them. I it, was like... It always feels to me, though I'm a musicals gal, it always feels to me like we just kind of skip over all the plays. And yeah, and, and I know. We, Remember we when they used to do these, scenes like, from them? Yeah. I used we to do love these, that. They do these video montages, and it just feels kind of sped through. And this really felt like they got a significant moment out of it. And I J was really I, happy about I, that. JT Rogers, who won the, the playwright of Oslo. Oslo, I said to him backstage, I said, oh, I loved your dramatic readings, like, like yeah. the acting side of you. And he goes... He's like, it was really, he's like, it was good. He goes, but Paula Vogel beat us all. <laughs> <laughs> because Paula Vogel is so great yeah. and like such a great personality on stage. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that was, ex Rachel Bay Jones. Rachel Bay Jones' speech was Was very exciting. She wonderful. looked, she looked she gorgeous. Uh, who else? Bette Midler, of course, was like off the charts. You know, it's, it's funny because, um, well, Dave, actually, you just mentioned Dave Quinn. Yeah. He came up to me afterwards because Bette Midler went into the, uh, she went to the press room mm -hmm. and she was just sort of talking and going on and on and telling all this like factual. He's like, oh my God, it's the first time we've really like, heard her talk. Yeah. Because she hasn't really done she much. She hasn't done the rounds. Yeah, we haven't really heard her get. talk much about Dolly and she's right. only done very select uh, promotion. So right. um, come on, Bette, if you want to come on Live at Five, we're I here. Mean, I'll get out of the way. We're here, we honey. Will. We're good. Or scooch over. Either uh, yeah, so it was an exciting, exciting night. Yeah, I, uh, there's a lot of... Um, oh, and Bandstand. I'm excited for Bandstand. Yeah. I thought they came off terrific. They, see, that's a great example and it's a not, of a It's a nominee, as Kristen Child would say. Right. Not one of the nominated musicals, but great number, came great performance. really great on camera. And I think that, um, let's face it, the, the rest of the nation is watching for celebrities, right? Because that's, yeah. that's what, what draws yeah. them in if you're not a super fan. But for those of us, we like our homegrown Broadway. We like our homegrown Broadway sure. stars. And last night we saw a lot of those homegrown, homegrown Broadway stars be honored, like Gavin Creel, like oh, Rachel Gavin Jones. Creel. You know the people who have been at this for so long and done such quality work, time after time, and to see them up there accepting Tonys. Yeah. I kind of think it doesn't get better than I that. I mean, yeah, Gavin Creel. Yeah, Gavin alone. Who doesn't Ohio love Gavin Creel? Ohio Pride! Uh, if you could change one outcome, what would it be? Ooh, good question. How do you answer that without being shady? <laughs> <laughs> people, people who read people. <laughs> I actually really do love Doll's House Part Two as a play. Ah. Also, uh, Joe said Danae Benton Ooh. should play Eliza Doolittle next year. Wowzies. Interesting. Uh, Elliot is asking, is there a good website to rewatch the Tonys? Well, you can watch a lot of them on YouTube, first of all, yeah. because they put up a lot of clips. And then I think, like on iTunes, you can buy it. It's um, it's also streaming on CBS.com. Oh, okay. Thank you for that information, Julie James. Uh, That's what I'm here for. Oh, you know, we should also tell everyone that um, our companies are kind of partnering. Yeah. Right. So Broadway.com, Broadway Across America, sister companies, and Sirius XM, we're starting to do like a, like a, you're going to start doing reports of what's happening on the road. Yeah, a lot more coverage of what's going on in the touring, um, the touring companies, where yeah. they are, what's going on with them, catching up, um, which I love because I was a tour, touring girl. Me too. I w that's how I got my Broadway. Not a touring girl, but <laughs> I saw tours. <laughs> <laughs> Debatable. Um, <laughs> it was <laughs> that was like a Kevin Spacey joke from last <laughs> night. How many gay jokes were there going to be? I, can, I, can we talk about this for a minute? Yes. I think it's really interesting that, so Kevin Spacey, there have been gay rumors about Kevin Spacey for a long time. Years. Just like gay rumors. And, and then last night, and they've never been acknowledged one way or the other, but last night there were like 18 gay jokes. Yeah. It was, just, it was funny. I mean, I, like. Yeah, I was just like, so... What are you trying so to say? So what's the takeaway? <laughs> <laughs> what's the takeaway? <laughs> it's just you felt free to joke endlessly about that because it's the Tonys? Yeah, I don't know. 
but he was he was fun and he uh was he fun. was out on the town last night yes indeed yeah kevin spacey i think that um it's fun it was and i love the frank underwood bit at the end i mean that, i love that was worth uh, it what's her, what's her name robin wright. yeah robin so wright. good robin wright just with her without resting, saying a word kind of slayed the whole night for me yeah. <laughs> it was kind of like where are we yeah <laughs> she was a character like What's going on? Right. <laughs> and I love how she, I'm pretty sure I had to watch it again when Lin-Manuel Miranda came over and he was talking to him. I'm pretty sure she wouldn't make eye contact with Lin-Manuel Miranda. Ooh. She was just kind of like being like the first lady and just like dealing with the moment. <laughs> I loved it. It was, it, was really, it was really funny. She was very funny. Uh, David said, Paul's hair has won Tony's. Thank you. It's sweet. Aww. Um, uh, John said, what an exciting partnership. Yeah, so, right. We were Sorry, that's I interrupted. That's what we were talking about. So uh, I, I was saying I, I grew up on tours and I know that many, many, many of you and also Sirius XM listeners are also getting their Broadway that way. I think it's kind of a fun cycle in a way because here we are talking about all these shows and like in a year from now, you know, you guys are going to start seeing them via the tours and so you've heard about them a lot from us by the yeah. time they get to you so we're just going to do a lot more with that and then I might come and visit you more often yes we're going to come up with fun ways to work together yeah uh and then also I wanted to say that Chuck said Julie James is a rock star from Dayton Ohio your school friends are proud of you Aww. isn't that sweet gosh oh, thanks that. Rob how much do you love your job Julie James I mean here's the thing I love it so much, but I do feel that, probably like you do, that it is a little deceptive, partly my fault, that people don't maybe know how hard work it is. Yeah. Um, that, that it is I extremely intense and that there's a lot of, what I mean by it's my fault is that I tend to put out there into the world only the best, most exciting, <laughs> most positive, wonderful, glamorous, exciting moments. Like your Instagram stories. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> it makes everything c look kind of lit, right? Yeah. Like it's yeah. like, I'm just fire at all times. But it, there is um, there is the not very exciting part that you don't see, which is me just sitting at a, at a right. desk. Um, Less makeup. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, depends on the day, and and just you know programming my arse off and yeah. uh, and and making sure that there's a 24/7 machine for two different channels because I do Metropolitan Opera right. channel as well. Opera, opera so there's like a lot going on kind of at all times. But the good news is just know that like hard work really does pay off, and so I think. I bet you feel the same way, that then when you arrive at those special moments where you're talking to somebody that you really admire, um, that feels like the reward, right? Mm. Because it's like you put, in, you put in all of your effort and your planning and your time, um, and then... And Patty Lapone's sitting in front of you. Right. Yeah. Right. Or like the other day we did an event and I walked into the green room and she was like, Julie! And I... Patty Lapone. Yeah. yeah. Patty Lapone yeah, she knows said, who you are. like... She knows shouted you. out my name, yeah. and there was a girl in Dayton, Ohio, hi Rob, um, that was listening to I Dreamed a Dream on a tape recorder <laughs> on a boom box in my car because I got that car from my grandma and it only had an 8-track tape, <laughs> and I didn't have any 8-tracks, so I put like a boom box <laughs> on the seat next to me, and all I would do is like belt along with Patty and belt along with Patty and belt along with Patty as a 16 year old girl in right. Dayton, Ohio. And so to walk into a room and have, you know, her call your name is a surreal experience. So that feels like the, the, the real payoff of all that work. Hi, Lapone. High five at live at high five live at five. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> Thank you for that really high awkward five, five. promotion. Um, okay, well, we have to go because we've been talking. We've already gone way over because we could just talk on camera forever. We can just keep going, uh, but we won't because we have things to do. <laughs> but thank you so much for being thank here, you Julie. For having Everyone, me. check no, out you guys. on Sirius XM. I know you already know to give them the, the whoop, whoop. on Broadway. You can still probably get the last bits of story in, in Instagram, Julie underscore James. That's also my Twitter, and um, but I have to say it's really kind of going on on Snapchat, Julie James NYC. You, if you want to see like some stuff from last night, like me and Darren Chris in the middle of the night. What? I miss Darren Chris. I left too early. Oh well. See you next time, Darren. <laughs> uh, all right, Julie. Thank you for being here, and we'll be back tomorrow with another amazing guest. Five o'clock, live at five. Thank you. Love you guys.